I wanted to start with some broad questions. You've been talking about finding common ground with business. So if any business leaders are watching this and they're concerned about what a potential Labour government would mean for business, what, what would you say to anybody who is concerned? Have a look at our manifesto. Have a look at the principles behind it, which are about a fairer, more equal society and also about investment in the future. Look at our plans on education and if they wish, come and talk to us. Have a chat about it all. They may not like it all, they might like it all, but we're putting out a serious offer there of how the British economy and society could, in our view, be much better and much happier if we actually spent a bit more on the public realm in order that our economy could grow for the benefit of all. And, and if, I mean, the CBI, after your uh, party conference a month or so ago, the CBI said that some of the policies you were talking about would have investors running for the hills. If, if that were to happen, how, what would your response be to that? Well, I wasn't quite sure which hills they're running for or why. Um, what we're doing is saying that we need stronger infrastructure in Britain, railways particularly, but broadband. We need a much more intensive rural investment strategy to ensure fairness, and we need a better re regional strategy. I don't see why any investor should be running for the hills on that because what they would be getting was actually a better basis on which to invest at the moment. If you're in the northeast or northwest and you've got inadequate transport infrastructure, very poor broadband connection, and a insufficiently trained local work workforce, are you going to go there? Probably not. So a Labour government, a future Labour government, would offer plenty of opportunity to private business? Yes, we offer opportunities with a better trained workforce and a, an ability for us to invest in new and high technologies and also being prepared to go in partnership with the private sector on new industries, new businesses and new technologies. Very good question at the CBI conference about uh, the new, the fourth industrial revolution. So you'd be I looking think for crucial. more partnership with the private sector, yes. not less? Yes. In, in certain areas, particularly with development of new technologies and also development of sustainable energy sources. Um, on the subject of Brexit, which I know is something you've been yeah. talking about today, what is the key difference between what you're proposing and what the Conservatives propose? Because both would involve being outside the single market and the customs union, wouldn't they, actually? And then just negotiating as something as close to what we have right now as possible. What we've said is that we want a transition period in which there is full membership of both while the transition goes on. And we reach that decision after a lot of discussion and it seems to be something that's getting a lot more common ground. But and after transition? We've explained that to the European Union as well. After transition, we're not going to be members of the EU, obviously. There has to be a trade arrangement with Europe, which does two things. One is make sure that we've got tariff-free trade access to the European market, and they, of course, have access to our market, and that we run our economy in a way that isn't trying to undermine or undercut Europe, but that by inheriting the regulations that come from Europe, workers' rights, environment and consumer rights, that we uh, guarantee we will continue with those, if not better them, in the future. So we're not trying to undercut, uh, undercut Europe, as some in the Tory party want to do. And should we pay for that access, that market access? Uh, I want us to have market access which is beneficial to both sides. I hope that we wouldn't have to pay for it. Um, the principle has to be that there's market access of benefit to both parties because the supply chains of, for example, the car industry or train manufacturing industries in Britain, both of which are doing quite well at the moment, do re rely very heavily on European um, uh, supply chain. Can you see any situation where we would need to have a second referendum on Brexit? We haven't considered a second referendum. What we want to do is negotiate this process through. We don't know when the next general election will be, so we don't know at what point we would uh, hopefully be in government. What I would want is Parliament to be able to hold the government to account and what it's doing, challenge the bill as it goes through. And this bill, I have to say, is everything I disagree with about the way in which Parliament should be run. Parliament should be there to hold government to account. This bill hands enormous powers over to the Secretary of State, which um, he can override Parliament. That's so wrong. So even if there's a big change in public opinion, when we see the type of deal that's we on the table, not, there's no need for a second referendum. We are not contemplating a second referendum. Okay. And on the transition side of things, do you see a transition as something that can be achieved 
now by the government or is it something that takes time to negotiate? I think it's important to get that marker down now that there's going to be a transition because otherwise we're now what uh, less than a year and a half away from the date of leaving the European Union. If there's no transition agreed until March 2019 which business is going to be investing in any new plant or machinery that relies on market access to Europe or the other way around? There's going to be enormous uncertainty and the danger of the cliff edge and then going on to World Trade Organization rules. So I think we should set that up now. And indeed, we made that very clear during our many meetings in Brussels with uh, Michel Barnier and others of the negotiating team what Labour's position is on this. And do you think that the EU27 would say yes now to transition? Is that the sounding you've been getting from Brussels? The feeling I get is that many of them recognise the sense of having that because Britain is a big economy, one of the biggest, not the biggest, but one of the biggest in Europe and therefore there has to be a good trade relationship. I don't think anybody wants to sort of see ourselves in the direction of some massive um, trade competition between Britain and the EU in the future, which is why we want this tariff-free trade access. You've talked today about the business taking more action on the subject of sexual harassment and this is something that's being talked about a lot in Westminster of course. If members of your party are found guilty of uh, sexual harassment, should your actions just be limited to removing the whip from them or should they be asked to not uh, be MPs anymore? MPs are elected individually to Parliament in law. And so so uh, if someone's broken the law, is there any way of getting rid of them? Well, that's a, matter for, that's a matter for Parliament if, if they've done so, but that's an if. The point I've made is that we have a robust reporting system in the Labour Party. We have a confidential hotline to a very trusted member of staff in the party, and we also have an independent element in the case of very serious allegations where we've retained a QC to investigate it for us. I am meeting the Prime Minister later today to discuss a appropriate system in Parliament, which I hope will include the trade unions that represent all staff in Parliament and ensure that everyone working in Parliament feels safe and feels that their grievances can be properly dealt with. But I also say this to all businesses, make sure you haven't got sexual harassment going on in your workplace and you do have a confidential reporting system and you take action on it. And are you confident there'll be no further revelations from within the Labour Party? I don't know what's going to come tomorrow any more than anybody else's. I'm not expecting them, I'm not looking forward to such a thing, but I'm quite aware that things can come out and I'm prepared to deal with it and deal with it immediately. Another subject that we're covering today, of course, is the Paradise Papers, um, bodies and individuals who've invested in offshore tax havens, not necessarily breaking any uh, laws. Should action be taken? Should a review be carried out? Yes, because if somebody has a large amount of money in Britain, which would be subject to taxation on the investment income or whatever form of taxation is appropriate. And they are able to put that money into an offshore tax haven, become wealthy as a result of it, and the rest of us not get the taxation income, be it in Britain or France or any other country that's done that. Who loses? Schools? Hospitals? Fire services? Ambulance services? The public realm loses as a result of it. The anger out there, when they read this stuff in the paper about billions being put away in tax havens, it's got to be countered. The only way to counter it is to make sure we have a serious system of tax collection at the point that the wealth is created. So there should be a review? Yes, indeed, there should be a review. And John MacDonald has called for, which I support, Here's the Labour Party position, an inquiry into the, all the revelations surrounding the Paradise in papers. Including the Queen? Everybody. And so that means the, the royal household are subject to taxation. Uh, I don't know what has, ha what has happened in that case. That is, uh, these issues all must be part of that realm. And I don't think anybody really wants this to be carrying on.